Okay, guys, in this video, I will talk about local and global access. Okay, whenever you are going to design any steel structure in any software, whether it is STAD or RISA or anything else, you know that you need to have a clear idea about the local axis as well as the global axis. Okay, so if you are new to this channel, please do subscribe and also don't forget to press the bell icon so that in future you can be benefited. Okay, so at the very first, why you need to know about local axis as well as global axis. Okay, so first clear this question. Let's say this is a luxury bus and you would like to go to a trip in this bus. Okay, to make the trip hassle free, what are the condition? This bus need to be a very good condition. Okay, not only that, all the basic amenities like seats, like the ACs and other amenities, they also need to function properly. Okay, so at the very first, let's say instead of having in a good condition, let's say the bus is something like this one. Okay, so is it possible? To drive this bus not at all because overall condition of this bus is completely poor or destroyed so we can say that globally this bus is not at all in a condition to drive okay now let's say the bus is very good globally that means the engine the tires the wheels the brake everything is very good okay and you can drive it very easily but the seat for the passengers are broken like this okay so can you enjoy your ride in this broken seat not at all right so locally this seat has failed to provide its service okay so to make the trip hassle free the first condition is the bus need to be in a good condition globally as well as locally each and every component of the bus should be in a good condition right okay so now project this simple concept into a structure okay so let's say this is a simple frame and all the joints here are pin joint every joint is a pin joint right okay now let's say you have lateral load like this so what are you thinking is it stable not at all because as every joint is a pin joint to carry this lateral load you need to provide a bracing otherwise it will collapse so now this structure is not stable globally okay so under this lateral load the structure is not stable globally okay so to make it stable globally what you have to do you have to simply provide a bracing like this now the lateral load will transfer to this bracing via this strut and go to this foundation and it is stable globally okay now let's say you have a vertical load like this and this beam is very uh, let's say very nominal section and this load is very large okay and under this loading this beam is susceptible to break so we can say that locally this beam is not stable to carry this load so to carry this load what you have to do you have to strengthen this particular beam okay so now you have to provide a stronger beam to carry this heavy load okay now this is locally stable okay if you want more example like this regarding this global and local stability in that case here you can see that this is a simply beam and these are two support and here we have provided this external loads okay and let's say this beam is sufficiently strong enough to carry all this external load okay but if you consider this wave in this marked zone here the wave is subjected to a compressive load and and if this wave is not strong enough under this compressive load this wave will buckle like this and in that case we can say that this overall beam is globally stable okay but the wave is not stable locally got it so now i think the global and local concept is clear to you okay 
but you know that in the starting of this video i have talked about the local axis and global axis but till now i have talked only about global and local stability okay so i think the global stability and local stability of any structure will help you to understand about this global axis and local axis so now dive into this global axis and local axis concept okay so before that i need to discuss about major axis and minor axis okay if you already know you can skip it but if you are beginner in that case for a rectangular section what is the major axis this is the major axis and this is the minor axis okay so this is major this is minor this is very basic okay so i am not going into the very detail of it now let's say you have an i section or wide flange section in that case which one is major axis of course this is the major axis and this is the minor axis right so this is the minor axis okay and you know that in any axis system we will have x y and if it is 3d in that case z okay and we will use x for this major axis here you can see that we have marked this major axis as x axis okay for minor we will consider y so here if this is the major axis of this rectangle so we can name it as x x or x axis okay and this is the minor axis or y axis clear we will use further this simple convention okay so now consider this real life steel structure okay so in the steel structure if we consider the plan it will look something like this okay so here you can see these are the i section these are the i section okay and it has been oriented like this this is the flanges and this is the web flange and web okay now in this overall section if we consider this as a rectangle section which one is the major axis definitely this one is the major axis right so in your stad or risa whatever may be the software considering this one as the major axis okay you can name it as x okay so definitely this minor axis is going to be y and now here you can see that we have considered this major axis and this minor axis for this whole structure okay or you can say that globally this is the global consideration okay whenever we are considering the whole structure at a time then all this major axis or this x axis is nothing but the global axis that is why in the software these global axis are denoted by capital okay so if this is the x axis in that case it is capital x and if this is the y axis this is the capital y okay but here you can see that all this i section are oriented in such a way that their minor axis is along this x okay so you can say that the local axis of this i section is y but the global is capital x i am repeating okay so here for this section the global axis is this one and this is yes x right so this is x and this is global y so capital y but locally you know that this is the x and this is y okay so locally here this one this axis is y 
okay and this one is x as this is local axis that is why we are denoting this with small letter okay so the same is also valid for this section globally this is the x axis okay the global axis for this column is x but locally this is actually y no confusion if you do not understand please replay okay so the same is also valid for beam here we have discussed this is for column now consider this beam okay the axis convention for this beam so here this is the global x axis right and this is the global y axis and we are considering this vertical as global z right so the vertical one is z okay this horizontal one is x this one and this longitudinal is y these are the global axis so for this particular beam okay for this particular beam this one is actually global x axis right this is global x right and this is global y right and this is global z okay so for this beam these are the global axis now if you consider the local axis then you have to come to this section and in this section you know that this is the major axis so this one is x small x right and this is the minor axis right so this is small y and small y okay so now if i ask you what is the global axis for this beam the answer is along this beam length it is x global x okay along this cross section this is global y and the height of the beam is along this global z but locally the section is x along this global y and locally the section has y axis along this global z axis clear so that's all about local axis and global axis okay and if you like this video don't forget to share it